Hey guys, it's Christian and today I'm showing you how to transform your old and boring Linux terminal into a real productivity beast. I'm showing you all of the amazing customizations I've configured to my Linux terminal that make my life as an IT nerd easier. Such as configuring a shell prompt that shows me useful information about the current projects that I'm working on, displaying fancy icons for files and folders and my absolute favorite terminal application, Warp Terminal. Some of you might already know this application from some of my other video tutorials I usually record on my Mac. Well, I have some good news for all of the Linux fanboys out there because Warp has finally launched on Linux too. Really, I'm so excited about this because I sometimes just love to work and test certain things on my old laptop running Ubuntu Linux and now I can finally enjoy the same user experience I usually have on Mac on any Linux distro too. Even if you don't bother about productivity features in a terminal, you have to agree, it just looks freaking cool, right? <laughs> so let me show you how I'm doing all of this. First of all, let me tell you a bit more about the Warp Terminal and why I love to work with this application so much. So this is a modern and blazing fast terminal application written in Rust and it comes with some very innovative features such as the Warp AI and so many others. Honestly, working with this application feels more like working with a modern code editor than an old and boring terminal. For example, when you're typing in any commands, your input position is always pinned to the top or to the bottom. You can just easily decide that in the settings and whatever command you are typing in the output is all block based so you can search and filter those individual blocks you can select them and easily share and copy the output it uh, by the way has auto completion for most of the common developer tools such as docker kubernetes linux tools and this is all built in you don't need to configure anything for that and when you're typing in a more complex command or a script, you can easily jump around with your cursor, select the beginning of the command, replace it, add certain things. You can even spawn a multi-cursor to edit multiple lines at once or select certain words and replace them all in one single step. So this is nice and yeah, this is why I said it feels more like a code editor than an actual terminal app. Of course, it does support splitting multiple windows up and down, left and right. And a nice feature Warp has recently introduced is that you can move those windows around with your mouse so you can really set up your workspace as you wish. They also recently added some other cool features like Vim key bindings. They also have the Warp AI built in. So if you don't know the exact command for executing a certain step, you can easily just ask the AI and it will automatically generate the correct command for that. Now Warp has tons and tons of those amazing features and I don't want to go in each and every detail because I already have reviewed and covered it in some of my older videos. So if you want to learn more about that, I will link you a few of them in the description down below. So check it out. For me personally, the most compelling reason why I love working with this application so much is that it feels modern, not one of those old and clunky terminal applications that are around for decades. No, this is brand new. And Warp constantly adds new features and abilities is what is requested by the community and this is something I really enjoy. Now if you want to install Warp on Linux you just have to go to the home page and click on download and then you should have a drop down menu similar to this here. I don't know if it will look exactly that way when it gets released but here you can download it for Mac or for Linux you can just download the Debian and RPM packages or install it on Arch Linux or use it as an app image. So when you have downloaded this on Ubuntu for example I just need to double click on this and it was automatically installed and when you open it you just have to sign up for an account or sign in with an existing account. Now, I know what some people will say now about the sign up. Yeah, oh, why do I need to sign up for using a terminal? In a terminal, I'm typing in sensitive information like credentials and passwords. I don't want to sign up. And what about privacy with the warp terminal? And let me tell you this, as an IT guy, you probably should know those kind of mechanics from other tools yeah you have to sign in on github for example to use their application the same is also true for the warp terminal it is a developer and productivity tool and the sign up process allows warp to develop some team oriented features like sharing block uh, commands or sharing the warp drive so if you're worried about privacy and transparency you should definitely check out the privacy policy of warp terminal and go to their faq section so here they will answer all of those questions what information they collect and whatnot. Of course, they don't collect any information you are typing in the terminal, so no input and output is shared with any cloud service. But if you don't believe me, just go to the privacy policy, go to their homepage and check it out yourself. 
but I just want to focus a bit more on my personal settings. So how did I configure the terminal to look this way? And how do I display those icons when I'm listing folders and files, for example? And what about my themes, my colors and all of that stuff? So let, let's start with that. Here in the appearance settings, you can uh, configure your theme, your colors. It has a light and a dark mode, depending on the system settings, you can configure it to synchronize with the operating system. They also have a pretty cool feature here when you click on themes and on the plus icon, you can upload an image and it will automatically generate a terminal color theme from that image, which is really nice. But if you want to configure your own theme or you just want to use mine as a template or yeah, to use it as, it, as I've created it, you should check out my GitHub repository, Christian Lemper and go to my dot files repo. Uh, you will find a link to my GitHub page in the description of the video. And then go to the section dot warp and here in the themes folder, you will find a background for the light and the dark theme and two YAML files. So when you open them, you can see what I've configured to make this terminal look exactly the way I have it and how I've configured the background image. If you just copy this and copy it into the themes folder on your computer, you should see those options here in the left menu and you can select and configure the light and the dark theme. If you want to use custom themes on Linux, you have to put them in a different folder than on Mac OS. So you have to put them in the .local share warp terminal and then create a new folder that is called themes. So here, for example, you can see I've just added a sim link to my .warp theme files that I've uploaded to the dot file so that I can use the exact same configuration for my themes on Mac OS and on Linux as well. The next config settings that are very important for me is that I want to pin the input position at the top. So this is called the reverse mode. By default, warp will also always pin the command prompt to the bottom of the terminal. And I think this is a bit weird uh, because you might know it from other terminals that always have the, the command uh, starts at the top of the window. And what was also pretty annoying, if you're watching my tutorials on YouTube, you will have the play buttons and the timeline at the bottom and when the command prompt is always pinned to the bottom you will you cannot really see the commands that I'm showing you in the tutorial when you're watching the video on YouTube so that's why I have switched it to, to be pinned to the top so that should work better on YouTube as well. And what is also pretty important, warp comes with its own warp prompt. So when you're typing in commands, the command prompt can be customized by warp. And this is actually the default. When you want to use your own custom shell prompt, you have to select the shell prompt that you have configured in your settings and not use the integrated warp prompt. And it looks a bit better than the warp prompt. So I've just configured this here. By the way, we will take a look later how exactly I have configured this shell prompt. Just before you have to do a few other things here. For example, what is really important if you want to display icons for files and folders or for example the Linux distribution icon here in the shell prompt, you have to use a font that supports all those graphics. And here in the appearance settings, you need to go to the terminal font and search for a font that has all these graphics selected as the default font. So only then the warp terminal is able to render those graphics. I'm using the amazing nerd fonts and they have a high number of glyphs or icons. Yeah, so you can see they include icons from font awesome from powerline. Uh, material design and some other fancy graphics for all sorts of different uh, tools and programs and whatever you want to display. You just need to go to downloads here, uh, select a font that you like personally. For example, I just love to use the Hack Nerd font, so this is my absolute favorite. But feel free to use any of those fonts here as you like. You can download them and then you have to install them in the operating system. Once you have done that, you can go to Warp Terminal it is important that you enable this uh, checkbox here, view all the available system fonts, but then you can just select your favorite font and it will render those icons. So if you have a command, for example, the ESA application, so this is basically an open source replacement for the ls command. So it will list all the files and the folders in the current directory. So for example, when I go back to my 
a whole folder and type in the ESA commands with the dash dash icon. You can see it shows you all of this, but it also adds the codes for the glyphs that can be rendered by the nerd fonts. In my ZSH alias command file, so I've added an alias for the ls and ll command to replace the old and boring ls command with the ESA command that automatically executes it with the dash dash icons. Also, the group directories first, I just like to have this setting always. So whenever I'm typing in ls or ll, it will basically execute the ESA command and this will render those icons. Okay, so those tools and settings will do most of the magic to make this terminal look just amazing. Yeah, but there's also another thing and that is my shell prompt. I talked about this in the settings of warp. And what I'm using as a, uh, as a shell prompt is called the Starship application. This is a cross shell prompt that is very minimalistic. It's blazing fast and also very customizable. This is just amazing. And by the way, this works on all of the operating systems. So it works on Windows, it works on Linux, it also works on Mac OS with all of the same settings and it supports all of the shells you probably can imagine. I mean, it supports ZSH, it supports Bash, it supports Fish, it also even supports PowerShells. And to get this installed, you just need, uh, of course, you need the nerd fonts to be installed, yeah, just like with all of the other programs that want to display graphics. And then you can just follow the installation uh, instructions on the homepage. By the way, I will put you all of those links in the description, so don't worry about that. And then just follow these instructions here on Windows, on Mac OS, on Linux. I don't want to go through all of the different possibilities here, but it's actually pretty simple. You just download the application and then add a single line into your bash RC or your ZSHRC file, depending on what default shell you're using on your operating system. And when you have that, remember, you also have to turn off the warp default prompt and switch to your own custom prompt. And when you open the terminal application, it should start to render the Starship prompt. Now, of course, I've also customized the Starship prompt to look exactly the way like I want it. For example, I'm displaying this icon here for the Ubuntu Linux distribution that I'm running on my laptop here. On my Mac, this of course looks different and it will show you the amazing fancy Apple logo. Yeah, but let me also go through the Starship configuration file to show you exactly how I've configured that. So here I've added some custom formattings to print the custom shell prompt information in the exact same order, just like I want it. So I first want to display the operating system, then the username, the hostname, Kubernetes directory, git branch and git status. And those variables here refer to individual configuration settings here as well. I also dropped some of those ugly default prompt characters. So there's nothing that is displayed at the beginning of your command. And here in the first variable here, the operating system, you can also type in a specific format. So what color you want to display this. Um, you also can use the symbol variable. So this automatically will show you the operating system represented by a logo here. You can see these are all of the symbols. You can also customize them here, by the way. So you can add those configuration settings into your Starship configuration and replace those icons with whatever you like. For example, when I copy this here and I would change it, you can see that automatically reflects in the terminal prompt as well. Oh my gosh, this looks ugly. So let's just go back to the default. So you can just customize this like you want. Just have a look at this as a template, refer to the official configuration and just build your own custom shell prompt if you like, or just be lazy and copy my settings. <laughs> Feel free to use it, so no worries. And I also want to show you one more thing here because you might say, well, I often work on different machines here, like my Mac, my Linux machine. I also have a MacBook Air. I have a Mac mini. How do I synchronize my dot file configuration that I'm storing on GitHub and push them to my individual machines? Well, I'm using another application for this. This is called Yetem. And this stands for yet another dot files manager. And of course, there are many, many dot, file man dot files managers around, but I just like this because it's very simple. It's just built on top of Git. So it needs Git to be installed on your computer. 
You can see it has a few special commands. For example, the yadm init will make sure that it initializes an empty repository that you can store on Git, but it automatically adds this to your local current user directory. And then you can add a specific configuration files to be synchronized and yeah, pushed and pulled by the Git repository. For example, when I have a configuration file that I want to add to my Git repository, such as the Starship prompt that I might have updated, I just need to type in yadm and use the usual Git commands that I already know. For example, I want to add the dot config to the staging area. I can use the yadm status and when I want to push an update of my configuration files, I can just use the commit updated Starship prompt of course, I've not done any changes, but assume I would have done that. I can just use yadm push to upload those changes to GitHub and use a yadm pull to automatically pull down any updates that I've pushed and committed on my other machines. And Git is really nice for this as a central storage. I'm using GitHub. Of course, you could also use any other Git storage. You could use a private repository if you don't want to share this with other people. I just love to have you can look at this and you can use it as your templates or inspiration source. And this is really nice to synchronize all of the configuration settings in the warp terminal, the themes, the backgrounds, the Starship prompt anything that I just want to share across those different devices. But now before we stop, I also want to give you an update on some of the warp specific features that I'm using in my terminal, especially the workflows, because workflows are yeah, one of the most important features in the warp terminal that I love to use. And this is by the way, automatically synchronized with your warp account. Just like I said, those sign in features are not really to track the input and output operations in your terminal. This is not the why you need to sign in. This is because they want to provide you features like the warp drive where you can create repeatable commands and workflows uh, that you can use as template and you can share them with your company, you can share them with other people or just use the personal warp drive. One uh, pretty complex command where I have used this is to create a self-signed certificate. So this actually executes four different commands that I have defined in one simple workflow and I can easily just go through these variables and define DNS settings here. I can define the expiry date for the certificates and so on. I've also updated some other uh, workflows for managing Kubernetes, like opening a shell in a Kubernetes pod on a specific namespace. I don't need to type in all those complex Kubernetes commands here. Or when I quickly want to restart a deployment to automatically execute the command uh, scale down to replica zero and scale up again to one. So this will make sure that the pod is restarted in this deployment. Also pretty nice. And here it automatically selects those variables. For example, I can use the traffic demo one. Then I can switch to the namespace, which is traffic, for example, and I can easily just hit enter and execute this. You can now easily create them by clicking on the plus icon here, create a new workflow, type in a complex command. Well, this is an easy example, but it does, <laughs> I don't care. You can now click on autofill. So this will automatically fill the description and the title of the command by something useful. So really some nice AI features that Warp has built in. So it makes your life a lot easier. I hope you like this and you will use some of those settings and configuration files and tools for your own terminal setup as well. So please tell me in the comments, what do you love to use for running a terminal application in Linux? Do you consider using Warp and trying it out? And will you use some of my configuration files? Leave me a comment down below. That would be cool. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. Hope you liked it and I will catch you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.